I want a 5,000 square foot home with four bedrooms, five acre lot with a pool, an upstairs loft, no HOA, no Melarus, all under $500,000. Can you make it happen? Okay, now obviously that's something that's not really realistic in California. You're probably going to see something like that for like maybe $2.2 million. I know because I actually looked it up. There's a $2.2 million property out here in Santa Clarita. That's almost exactly that. And before you guys start saying, I can get that in my home state for less than $300,000, just know that um, it's not California. What's going on guys? My name is Danny. I'm a real estate agent out here in Southern California with Romeo Echo Real Estate. I don't have my t-shirt. I have my Cuts t-shirt on right now. I'm out here in Santa Clarita, California. I deal with all properties out here in Santa Clarita, the San Fernando Valley, greater, greater LA area, really. Uh, if you have any questions about the areas out here that I'm talking about, make sure to look at my uh, description down below. All my contact information is down below. Buying a home is a highly, highly emotional process. We're all susceptible to like that shiny object and kind of going for that instant gratification, wanting what I want now and, and not dealing with anything else, not, not settling for anything else. And you know what, this, this method that I'm talking about today, getting a starter home is a tried and true method. And it's really something that a lot of, a lot of people that I work with tend to do because of the fact that they know that they can eventually upgrade into a property that's going to be a better fit for them. That doesn't mean that we're getting something that's completely trashed or that wouldn't work for them at all. But facts are facts, guys. You know, uh, initially, you probably won't be able to afford that dream home right off the bat unless, you know, you, you, you make a lot of money, you make a good amount of money, and you can do whatever you want, of course. And I kind of want to make sense of this whole method of purchasing a starter home because I think it's actually great for everyone financially and mentally as well. Now, I get excuses all the time from people stating that they're they're waiting for the market to crash. They can't wait for the market to crash so that they are able to purchase that dream home or they're saving up their cash so that they can they can finally purchase that first home, which is going to be their dream home. And it, to be honest, it's hard to convince those people that it, that's really just a rat race. You're going to be consistently chasing that thing and never getting to the point of purchasing that home and ha having to settle for that starter home either way. There's nothing wrong with a starter home. This is a tried and true method that people use in order to level up whenever it comes to their either real estate investments or their personal homes. And I'm not saying buy a home now if you're just financially not in a place to purchase a house. Focus on what you can control and the perfect time for you is when you're ready. So let's go over how this method actually works, okay? We're gonna have our client, um, Nacho. Nacho! Nacho basically wants in his life what I explained earlier, that 5,000 square foot, four bedroom, blah, blah, blah. He wants all those things in his dream home that would be perfect for him and his little Nachitos. Again, if he were to buy something like that, let's say it's that property that I explained earlier at $2.2 million, he would have to save up $440,000 in order to have a 20% down payment on that property. That's definitely out of Nacho's budget. The Nachitos can't afford that. All right, so this part's gonna be kind of boring because it's math and not a lot of people like math, but it makes sense. So let's say the Nachitos can afford a property at $500,000. Let's assume that they have a 10% down payment and they have a 3% interest rate, which is a little high, but you know, we're trying to be conservative here with the numbers. And we're assuming that taxes are about maybe one and a quarter and a hundred dollars on home insurance and a half a percent on PMI. So all in all, that'd be around $2,700. Let's assume that's the payment, $2,700. That's something that Nachitos can definitely afford. Let's say Nacho and his family, the Nachitos, want to sell their property in five years, right? So at that point in five years with just a 10% down payment, their $2,700 um, a month payment, they would have about $100,000 in equity alone. And that's assuming that the property has an increase in value, which more than likely 
it will in the next five years is just how how real estate works you're naturally just going to increase your your value over time so let's say in those five years the property has increased just five percent just five percent let's just assume now they have their property that's worth five hundred twenty five thousand dollars they owe four hundred thousand dollars so they have a hundred twenty five thousand dollar spread that's great he more than doubled his money in five years because he put the fifty thousand dollars the first time and then he kept paying the mortgage and then the, the, the loan went down that's what the loan went down and then the property value went up down and then up down up so he has that hundred twenty five thousand dollars in equity right he's going to be paying essentially that five percent that he gained towards closing costs and paying a real estate agent to sell his property things like that so again back back to a hundred thousand dollars and what can he do with a hundred thousand dollars let's say he puts a 10% down payment on a million dollar property. So that's really the key to the process here. You're paying down the loan amount of the property and you're increasing the value of the property. Hopefully you're thinking about buying into a area that's going to be increasing in value over time. Of course, you want to have that in the back of your mind. You want to make sure you're buying into a good area as well. I think that getting a starter home is a way to also humble yourself and realizing what it is that you actually need out of a property the dream is obtainable guys you just have to have that aggressive patience to you you have to have the ability to think further ahead rather than just right now again if you're going to be buying make sure you buy right for yourself and for the future as well do not be house poor i cannot i cannot stress this enough do not be house poor God forbid, if something happens, you lose your job. COVID-19 happens all over again. I don't want anyone that's watching these videos to actually experience what I, my family experienced when we lost our home. It's a terrible, terrible feeling. Make sure you're buying right, planning for the future, and you're setting yourself up the right way. But all right, guys, I think that's about it. A, a starter home is a great idea. I think you should do it. Uh, if you have any great stories about how you purchase a starter home and you upgrade it into your dream home, drop it in the comment section down below. I would love to hear you guys' stories. I love hearing stories from my clients personally, and I'm sure it's going to have some inspiration for people that are going to be watching this as well. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification so that you can see the next video that comes out. I know I had a lot of Santa Clarita videos coming out, and I have a lot more Santa Clarita videos coming out. Let me know how you like this video by hitting the like button. That's going to tell me a lot of information as well as putting a comment down below. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. I'll see you later. Peace.